Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster. This is the key of the vehicle which is actually quite big and heavy as well. In fact, it has only three buttons so I don't know why it's so big. Unlock the car, lock the car and this to open the boot of the vehicle there is the Aston logo. To open the roof, all you need to do is keep the unlock button pressed on the key and there the roof opens. It does it so fast. It's the fastest convertible roof in the world. Anyways, straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay of this vehicle which means there's a lever here and there it goes up. You see the engine has been pushed all the way towards the cabin because this is a front mid engine strut braces there. It says handcrafted in Great Britain or rather hand built in Great Britain final inspection by Ahmed Munir. What a lie. This engine is actually from Mercedes AMG who have handcrafted it. So I don't know why Aston is claiming otherwise. Anyways, here is where the washer fluid goes in and you know what there's an air intake right there these are very much functional these air vents okay so let's do one thing let's just shut this you know what the special paint schemes cost an additional 1 lakh rupee and like i was telling you this is very much functional now it's a such a expensive car now so they have to obviously protect it so paint protection film has not been done very well you can see that anyways coming to the front of the car firstly the grill okay this one is with the optional Aston Martin grill because the stock grill which is known as the Hunter I believe that one has this moustache which is very similar to what we have seen in the recent mini models that was a bit weird not everybody liked it so you can get this optional conventional Aston Martin grill with these slats of course the car looks absolutely sexy looks brilliant there is the Aston Martin logo of course front camera is placed here front parking sensors there you can see sort of a lip treatment in gloss black in fact ground clearance is really very less here Okay, and because it travels at such speed, something or the other is stuck there. Yeah, can you see that? Coming to the lights, the lights are beautiful. Obviously, these are all LED units. This is the low beam, this is the high beam, and this is the indicator. It's a very slim light as such. And when you come to the side, you realize that this is not a very long car. It's a very compact car. The length is around 4.5 meters. The wheelbase is around 2.7 meters. The wheels are absolutely gorgeous. Tire size happens to be 255, 40, 20s at the front wheel design is stupendous it says aston martin here on the brake caliper which is finished in gloss black coming to the rear wheels they are obviously bigger in terms of size 295 35 20s there you can see aston martin written which is easier to read of course that is the disc you know what it does not get the option of carbon ceramic disc no aston martin is like this car does not really need it there you can see the size of the tire it's huge i'm just going to show you the car from the rear roof up of course and i'm going to do the same from the side as well because you're going to put the roof down in like 10 seconds before that let me show you this is very much functional this has this gloss black finishing you can see the distance okay it's pushed all the way out indicators placed there and there's a camera here as well this actually blinks at night yeah this is actually lighted up at night and this is flush so you just have to push it like this to open the door and now we are going to be pressing a button which means that i have to press this button rather pull it to open the roof there you can see the roof is going down it is very fast it's already gone down that's how quick it is the roof goes down in around 6.7 seconds and goes up in 6.8 seconds or like that hugely quick and you can see the doors are a little bit rising because it gets the swan doors yeah you know what the swan doors is well basically it's aston martin's way of doing doors now these doors rise up so you do not hit a curb at all and that's a good bit because there you see you don't have to worry when you park the car near a divider and obviously it gives aston martin its own identity because aston martin is the only company doing such doors as you can see the car looks absolutely gorgeous with the doors open both from the front as well as the rear and here you get beautiful blue stitching it says airbag here in fact this is the switch to actually turn on and off the passenger airbag 
By the way, the lever to open the boot is placed here on the co-passenger side. Unlike what a person who keeps searching for quirks in cars mentioned that it is on the other side and it's on the passenger side even for left-hand drive markets. So Aston Martin has done cost-cutting. No, they have not done cost-cutting. They always decide to put it on this particular side. Now, let me just sit here before that. Let me show you. It says Aston Martin Vantage hand-built-in Great Britain. Now, the problem is that this thing does not open. Yeah, this is a glove box, which is the place for a glove box actually, but this does not open at all. Aston Martin says the reason it does not open is because in order to reduce weight says airbag here and you know what there isn't much space for the co-passenger unfortunately so that's a bit of a bummer and that's kind of funny considering the fact that there are no pedals here yet there's more space on the driver's side by the way there is this leather patch right there so that you know your knees are comfortable and there are other switches for the adjustment of the seat with three memory functions as well that's kind of cool and here you obviously get a visor along with a mirror too but this does not come out of course now here again you see beautiful leather to actually pull the door and then there's this armrest as well so the thing is how do you actually store stuff firstly there's this button which looks very similar to the buttons here okay you press this and it opens here there is some amount of storage space where you can keep stuff but once you're inside the car it's very difficult to do acrobatics and turn behind there's this massive aston martin manual which is like oh my god it's like 5000 pages big so that you know where is what because initially you'll get confused when you sit in an aston martin this does not really close properly okay and uh, you know what it doesn't have heating function here which is usually the case with such cars that you know convertibles and roadsters have it so that you don't feel cold it does not have it but somehow it manages to you know deflect the wind without a wind deflector quite well this is fixed this does not move it does not need to move yeah a little bit hard plastic here and there anyways let me show you the car properly let's shut the door okay here you can see there is a blind spot indicator which will tell you not to take a turn and if you noticed it already or not the wipers are opposite direction like in the case of the 8th generation Honda Civic as well as the Tata Aria the Tata Hexa too okay now once the doors are shut yeah there it shuts the car looks a million dollars because it's a gorgeous looking car it's very sexy amazing in terms of design and aesthetics and from the side it looks even better this car was built to be a roadster because somehow it looks even better than the coupe version of this particular model the vantage here you can see you get a side skirt sort of a treatment with gloss black finishing and this is where fuel goes now the thing is this car requires a minimum 95 octane actually 95 octane is the minimum you get here in the uk and in india you get 91 octane as the minimum so that's the reason they have to retune the cars for the indian market and talking about the uk i'm right now in the uk and i realized that someone who keeps reviewing cars has actually left one of his things the stick of truth is lying here but since i have the fingers of truth let me tell you that the exhausts are real af oh my god there it's blowing straight on the camera so you've got quad exhaust right now because the car is in track mode things are getting a bit <laughs> loud and you get this diffuser treatment as well rear parking sensors there's a reverse camera here aston martin logo says aston martin right there just so that people do not confuse the aston martin logo with the one from bentley or genesis okay there's a reflector treatment here here you can see because it's got i think self park and all the sensor is actually placed on the side that is the indicator so it doesn't have a continuous running light this thing does not glow but this one glows under braking so when you have turned on uh, the light there's some sort of glow there of course and there you see it absolutely gorgeous looking machine but there's a problem you cannot open the boot from here yeah you just cannot do it you have to either use the key i don't think it's going to open right now because obviously the car is on at the moment so yeah that's not going to work at the moment so we'll have to actually go ahead and open it by pressing this button yeah now the boot has opened and let me tell you that the boot space is very small okay yeah the boot is very small it's just 200 liters down from 270 liters which was the case coupe model which had a slightly bigger boot but because it has to store all this as well the fabric roof which actually is good because it saves some weight 
boot carrying capacity has been compromised this is nice leather handle to close this and the umbrella holder and an umbrella seems to be missing here but this carpeting so aston martin really does some good attention to detail okay it's not that difficult to actually close this there it's shut so it's a beautiful looking car with those quad exhaust meaning some serious business guys and i think the rear angle is one of the best by the way this is the rear fog light which also converts into the reversing light and then you can see their proper diffuser treatment this is a sports car which actually means business all right now let's get to the front part of things driver side specifically telling you the tire pressure bits and then the seat belt has to be manually taken it does not push it self forward like happens in a lot of other cars door pockets are kind of useless very small these are the controls for the power window this is for mirror adjustment this is to open the boot and this is obviously to open the roof of the vehicle there you can see there's a speaker placement there in fact sub woofers are placed right there can you see that yeah sub woofers are placed behind the seats audio quality is absolutely fantastic <laughs> but i find this to be a bit on the higher side so you can't really rest your arm like that that's a bit of a bummer and here are controls which come straight out of a mercedes car this is the electric parking brake this happens to be the headlight control automatic headlights this is for the rear fog and this is for the intensity i believe or headlight level or either of those things i'm kind of confused at the moment there you can see the pedals there's a proper dead pedal as well let me show you where the win number or the chassis number is written very typical to what we have seen in a lot of cars it's written here it says aston martin lagunda Langur, lagunda limited now once i get into the driver seat i realize that you're seated a bit high comparatively and why is that so well because of the engine being right below the dashboard there you can see seats are really very comfortable adjustable in a lot of ways to adjust them here are your controls you can adjust the seat the only thing is since there is no space i'll just show you this every time you move the seat behind i'm going to move it behind automatically the seat will become more upright because there's just no space so here seat is going back and that is a bit of an issue so now i have moved the seat ahead as much as possible and then i will recline this bolstering and all is super duper awesome this is a very comfortable car that's moving ahead let's get inside now here things get a bit interesting just close the door <laughs> this is an auto dimming mirror but if you notice one thing beautiful finishing here here you get a sun visor along with a beautiful mirror as well and this is so nice and smooth to operate let me just turn off the lights firstly so we're going to get into auto lights we're going to turn off the hazard as well the twin cup holders right there there's some storage space here along with a cigarette lighter here actually the key should be going but this key will not go there okay maybe the key opens because the mercedes key is inside i believe there sd card slot along with two usb charging sockets as well twin cup holders right there this comes from mercedes this touchpad this rotary dial again comes from mercedes so the whole infotainment system actually comes from mercedes and here is where things go a bit wrong because mercedes has actually moved on to a better touch screen system this one is not touch okay there's a lot of glare which is coming so we're just going to turn off the roof so here i don't even have to wait it's gone it's super duper quick it doesn't take any time at all and there yeah <laughs> and it even shows you the display there when this is buckling unbuckling now look at this screen it's an 8 inch unit which is decent it's not great it's not bad but it's just sort of decent the problem here is that it's a very old unit it is definitely very dated and it feels very cumbersome to operate so when you want to go through stuff have to try and figure out where you want to go because you just can't touch it and you're so used to touch and there's so many buttons it's like crazy amount of buttons okay few buttons here then you know for the rotary dial some buttons there it's telling you passenger airbag on or off this is to turn on and off the infotainment screen along with volume control and hazard light parking sensors this is the camera this is for radio this is for media here sos traction control stop start system navigation and telephone so plenty of buttons and then you have a, like buttons to select the gear neutral drive reverse parking and this is the engine start stop button which actually blinks red when the car is not turned on when you apply brakes these are the controls for the air conditioning lot of switches so this is actually to increase or decrease the blower speed this is for the temperature for the dual zones and the problem is there's no display here the display actually happens to be yeah it is in the screen right now but if i'm not in the menu it doesn't seem to be showing me the oh my god i don't even know okay the fan is working very fast but i have no clue what is happening 
it has got apple carplay and android auto connectivity both of them actually work wirelessly as well but i'm super disappointed by the fact that there is no display here and then this is the button to unlock the car this to lock the car why two separate buttons this is for the light right there and there's another button for the light on the top so this is another one of those buttons others are obviously the ac functions so let's just get into the menu bit and let's try and browse through it's very cumbersome let me just put a front view i mean the whole system is like 3 years old already not 3 actually 4 5 years old already so let me try and get into the music thingy I don't think it's going to be possible it's going to be really difficult it says DVD I don't even know if that works let me do one thing let me do one thing better just get into reverse okay this is a reverse parking camera obviously it gets a 360 degree parking camera along with adaptive guidelines as well which work nicely let's get out of reverse let's get into neutral now the steering wheel has a few buttons this is for voice commands this is to cancel the voice commands this is for god knows what actually i think it's for volume This is for the suspension. The three settings for the same. This is to decline a call. So what is the button to accept a call? This is the button to accept a call. This is for the drive mode. The three drive modes. So it starts with sports. And this is a button to browse through that screen. And this is to go in the home of the screen. Is to go back of the screen. So I'll just show you that screen. Can you see that right away in front? Now here trip, navigation, radio, media, telephone settings, and all that. That is there. And you can get into a lot of settings. This is a digital. I mean everything is digital. All the three screens are digital. But the center one. shows you the tachometer along with the speedometer and gear position indicator and along with a lot of telltale lights on the left you can see the temperature is 12.5 degrees that's why i'm shivering right now and it's also telling you what is the suspension mode and it shows you the fuel as well as the engine temperature here you get to see the drive mode you are in so you can just change it like this by pressing a button and along with that the cluster's color also changes cool yes. now you can see this is actually straight from a mercedes car so is this the whole cruise control mechanism as well as the steering adjust which is both there for reach as well as rake and if you noticed it already the steering wheel is completely square yeah it's a square steering wheel the horn the horn is actually decent i find the car to be very loud even in standard mode anyways now how do i get out of the screen that's a bit of a, okay that the screen shut off so there's some glitch with the screen so mercedes needs to resolve this first and then give it to aston or probably just remove the screen only wipers work really very well obviously you would expect that and overall comfort levels in this car are decent but headroom is just about adequate for someone as tall as me there you can see my head almost touches here which isn't a big of i mean not such a big problem and here you can see you've got paddle shifters paddle shifters are huge they do not move along with the steering of course yeah paddle shifters are like massive steering feels nice to operate as well and i think i have given you a good overview of this car's interior let's do one thing let's start driving right away but before that let me show you it has actually got ventilation function and it's got heating as well and you know what is the price of this 90000 extra so it's there for both the driver and co passenger 90000 just for this let me just shut off the car and there it shows the aston martin logo whenever i turn off the car here you can see it's saying engine start i'll apply the brake and there this thing turns red so that's kind of cool it is actually linked to the brakes this engine start button which is the coolest bit other than that you know what these whole buttons and whole system is a bit complex also plastic yeah so a little mm, not that impressive and you can see they have used italic fonts here and the fonts are also not very impressive but the other problem is mercedes has used its own fonts right here so basically what is happening is this car has got separate fonts for the lever right here as well as here and there's no lever on the right side of course because yeah they have decided to put all the controls for the drive selectors right here in the center and doesn't this actually look like a eye which is looking at you constantly in fact you know what some plastic bits are not that great and then you've got this blue stitching by the way when you unlock the car at night it will show you a white light sort of a ambient lighting thingy actually these lights turn on so no proper ambient light either nothing comes out of the mirror in fact this also does not glow and the door handles are actually quite nice and impressive as well let's start driving right away All right, we're all set to go. Okay, listen, parking sensors are so aggressive and active. Straight away, we are going to get into track mode. Yes, and the suspension also in track mode. And hazard lights, where are they? <laughs> off, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, and off we go. Ha 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 ha! 
<laughs> acceleration is absolutely brisk you know what this engine is oh my god look at the way it downshifts this engine is absolutely stunning because this is the 4 liter <laughs> 4 liter bi turbo v8 which comes from mercedes amg this engine powers a lot of mercedes cars right from the c63 to the e63 to the older s63 and now the s class my bark and you know the list is endless because even the g wagon gets this particular engine and it doesn't end there the amg gt also gets it the tune is similar to the one on the c63 3s which means 510 ps of power around 5000 rpm and the torque output is 685 newton meters which comes in between 2000 to 5000 rpm somewhere about that the problem here is that it is detuned when you compare it to the amgs and uh, you won't really miss it because performance is absolutely amazing it pushes you back into the seat that's the level of performance it has to offer and then you know handling is super duper awesome the steering is not the most accurate but it is decently communicative not the most communicative either but just offer you a lot of feel and then this quest hearing you either love it or you hate it this just so much grunt on offer it's absolutely crazy the way <laughs> it accelerates so basically the engine comes from germany or rather austria where it is handcrafted by uh, mercedes's uh, amg partner okay uh, and the thing is that it's a beautiful smooth and refined engine with a lot of fun you get into the throttle it immediately responds that is the level of performance it has to offer and then there's so much grip as well from the <laughs> tires because they are wide enough and then obviously this is the first aston martin car to actually be using an electronic rear differential along with torque vectoring on dry surfaces there's just so much grip it's endless amount of grip and you get on the throttle ho oh, ho oh, it downshifts very aggressively it's not the fastest gearbox in that regard so it could be quicker still but yes it gets the job done pretty well and then you can use steering mounted paddles it will hold on to a gear it will not upshift unless and until you decide to do so you know what <laughs> there are pops and cracks and all that happening as well and the oh my god this car has a top speed of 310 km per hour whereabouts so the thing is that uh, it takes its own sweet time to go from 0 to 100 km per hour comparatively because it takes around 3.8 seconds to do the 0 to 100 km per hour sprint the coupe actually takes 3.7 seconds and the f1 edition coupe it takes around 3.6 seconds so it's 0.1 second faster um, the uh the coupe version because it has 98 kg less weight because of this roof and whole mechanism the weight has obviously increased a bit but then another interesting bit is that oh my god the ride becomes very uncomfortable over bad roads in track suspension mode so uh, the f1 edition actually has 25 ps more power at 535 ps it's actually stiffer and has a rear spoiler a fixed spoiler actually and all those things just to make it even more aggressive and fun and costly too this one will keep you happy when when you actually put the roof down which is the right time right now so you can see the stiffness of the car so there are three modes for the suspension so there are no drive modes as such there's this mode for the engine i think it also alters the gearbox so say sport sport plus and track no comfort mode no eco mode you don't need any of that bullshit now do you and then for this uh, suspension bit there is <laughs> again sport sport plus and track and then obviously it becomes very uncomfortable in track mode the suspension you can see the car bouncing all over the place right now because of the stiffness it's a very rigid and firm car and you can feel that almost every given moment once you slow down to under 30 miles or around 50 km per hour 48 km per hour but 50 km per hour is also what you can say you can actually put the roof down which is very quick look at the speed at which the roof goes down yeah it's gone that's how quick it is and now we're going to come to a halt and it's time to launch with the roof down okay left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor launch control active So basically I have actually activated the manual mode for the gearbox by touching one of the paddles but it will still shift in first gear then start to hold on to the gears from second gear onwards so it's a very uh, smooth process in that regard now body roll is very well contained they have actually made the car so stiff now that 
there is no body roll as such the only thing is the steering could have been better and because of its nimble dimension now it is very easy to drive this car is super easy to drive even when you're driving it fast only thing is you have to be very alert because it gathers space with a lot of enthusiasm now the thing is because of the open top nature of this car top speed has actually decreased marginally and although the engine and the infotainment system and all those bits come from mercedes the platform is aston martin's own shared with the db11 although aston martin claims that 70 percent of the parts of this car actually are unique to the vantage so basically it's a new platform which is made of aluminium bonded high strength and all that stuff and it works quite well okay the thing is the sound has been tuned by aston martin to make it a bit more mm, roary yeah it roars nicely and then the gearbox is very aggressive when you downshift it in terms of you know uh, holding on to the revs no when you downshift it okay you can hear some pops and cracks and all that also happens but there's another problem okay for uk and europe there's a norm which restricts the sound from a car to 75 decibels and this car unfortunately falls under that so it doesn't sound as loud as us models which are like really loud and in india obviously we get uk spec because we follow whatever's happening in the uk as well as europe so that's a bit of a bummer making a quick overtake is very easy because you get on the throttle and before you realize car is gone that there is some vertical movement which you can feel and on not so good roads now the car does move around quite a bit so you have to be really firm with the steering wheel and there let me just put it into auto mode by the way it has got adaptive dampers and this is the button for the adaptive dampers which changes the damping not very complex a car no drive modes to shuffle through or to pair stuff and all that no simple just press these buttons so you have all the controls in your hand now this one has a 73 liter fuel tank gives you a mileage between <laughs> Yeah, it gives you a mileage between 6 to 8 kilometers per liter when you drive it sanely and that mileage will decrease to 3-4 kilometers per liter when you drive it aggressively. Okay, listen to this. Oh my goodness, the sound is just breathtaking here. They've nailed it out of the park in terms of the sound. This blind spot monitor will obviously tell you if someone is in your blind spot. Very similar to what in, is there in Mercedes cars. But this display also shows you that if someone is approaching you. So that's kind of cool. So they have actually, oh my goodness, this car is like Diwali full of patakas. So talking about this Aston Martin Vantage, there are actually three variants. So it was launched in 2018, rather showcased in 2017, sales started in 2018 with the Vantage Coupe and then Roadster came in 2020. And uh, of course, there's also the V12 Speedster, which has 700 horsepower, which unfortunately is already sold out. And that is the last of the Aston Martin cars to get a V12 engine. That's the reason it's probably sold out. People are like, let's grab it before anything else. And the best thing about this car happens to be that its design is absolutely fantastic. I just wish they put so much attention on the interior bits as well, because the interior kind of feels dated in certain areas and come on Aston Martin you need to develop your own infotainment system or at least take the latest one from Mercedes because this is very 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 dated indeed and time for launch traction control actually box it down so you can get into sport for the traction control as well or you can turn it off to go drifting which is not advisable right now of course you're gonna, you're gonna eat up the tires by the way it uses an 8 speed zf source gearbox similar to the one on the amgs and that's a torque converter unit it's smooth no denying that fact it's not very ultra fast as such and it's actually mounted at the rear so there's no space in the hood probably that's the reason they have actually mounted at the rear but actually that's the case with the amg gt there's no space in the hood so they mounted rear uh, at the rear and uh, near the rear axle of course and this is obviously a rear wheel drive car the thing is that uh, it's a trans axle layout resulting in that uh, they had to actually put a carbon fiber propeller shaft to connect the engine and the gearbox and that reminds me of the weight distribution of the car this one has 49 at the front and 51 at the rear weight distribution the regular vantage coupe actually has a weight distribution of 50 50 making it very well balanced but this one also is good because it's rear wheel drive so more weight at the rear will obviously help you launch it more aggressively <laughs> It's such a thrilling car to drive. It's it's a joy. Trust me, it is a joy. This Aston Martin, you get that James Bond vibe that you are actually chasing something for the greater good. 
Oh, brakes are also very strong. Yeah, very sure footed. Only thing is the initial bite is a bit weak. Then it starts grabbing and then you can say it's linear. And then in the last 20-30%, it is very aggressive and sharp in terms of the way it bites into the brakes. And then because it's got stupendous grip as well. So you'll never really complain about this car. This is more about, uh, you know, going and enjoying over a longer distance rather than just outright, uh, you know, flying on a racetrack because that's somewhere it doesn't really excel and obviously being the entry level Aston Martin it has a lot of competition from other rivals right from Ferrari to McLaren to the likes and I would say the Aston Martin brand itself is so strong that people who want to get a car which is different unique and emphasis on style and desirability it's very hard to beat which brings me to the price of the car the price is actually 3.5 crores in india somewhere around that and the price in the uk is around 1.2 crores obviously its rivals also are priced similar both in india as well as the uk because that's how the taxation structure works this is actually made in the uk they call it handcrafted hand assembled hand built and all that but we know that the engine is coming from germany so is the gearbox so is this infotainment so are these levers and controls for the steering adjustment as well as the cruise control but it does not have any ADAS functions which is kind of disappointing you would expect lane keep assist forward collision warning none of that is there there's this panel right here which actually happens to be oh, every time I'm lifting off the throttle you can hear the pataka this is for the rain sensing wipers let's use the wipers right away the wipers are fantastic I really love the way the wipers work okay super duper awesome and the best thing about this car is that with the roof down you've got unlimited headroom so headroom is not an issue for me at all every time I lift off the throttle listen to this <laughs> Fantastic. The thing is, if you want to have even more fun with your Aston Martin Vantage, you can actually opt for a manual. Yes. So they launched the Aston Martin Vantage AMR, which was a limited edition version of this particular car rather the coupe version with a seven speed manual gearbox it was actually 96 kgs lighter because it got the option rather it got carbon ceramic brakes and then obviously the gearbox being a manual was much much lighter as well so it was quicker not really it was quicker till the top speed of 320 kilometers per hour but in terms of outright acceleration it was actually slower by 0.3 seconds so it used to take four seconds to go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour because obviously you can't shift gears as fast as an automatic can but uh, you know what you can get a seven speed manual with this car only thing is that the first gear is the dog leg so you have to actually push it like that which is a bit of a cumbersome issue because then obviously when you're like going like this into first you can't really launch it fast i think they have done it just to save that manual gearbox from blowing up i believe all right time to launch <laughs> you can see it does go right left and center especially on such roads which are not the smoothest as such and of course the rivalry also comes from porsche whose 911 is absolutely ballistic more precise better infotainment and a lot of other things but this engine is absolutely unbelievable there's some lag lower down which you can feel but then once the turbo kicks in it pulls very strongly now mercedes has obviously addressed that lag while putting a mild hybrid system but ashton hasn't done any of that the weight of this car 16 28 kgs which is decent actually a 1530 kg is the weight of the coupe version so almost 98 kg is lighter in spite of the fact that you know this is actually a soft top not a hard top a hard top would be even more heavier and here we go that is some serious space it can pull in no time at all so guys this is my vlog of the aston martin v advantage roadster it's phenomenal okay only thing is i think the tire noise is a bit too loud for my liking and overall insulation is fine but yes they can make this car so much better by telling mercedes stop giving us old stuff give us the latest in terms of the infotainment and probably the engine as well because this engine is already sold with a lot more power by mercedes amg but here it is like really low like 510 horsepower doesn't really cut it if you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up, that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye-bye.